Hello everyone, uh, this is going to be a video tutorial on how to get Windows 7 Service Pack 1 working on a Ryzen 3rd generation CPU. Okay, so um, there have been other video tutorials that you might find on YouTube describing how you get Windows 7 running on a Ryzen system. However, this is going to be focusing on the newest, well, technically not the newest, they just came out with the Ryzen 5000 series the other day. Um, but this series of Ryzen is still the most cost effective. Um, like, you know, even if I was building a system right now, I would still build based on this architecture because the Ryzen 5000 is uh, price performance ratio is a little bit worse. But anyway, so right here, what what you're seeing right here is a screensaver by Really Slick, by the way. Um, we go here. It's called Lattice OpenGL Screensaver. And it's got a bunch of really cool settings. It's, it's just awesome. I really recommend it. Um, so you go to Really Slick, um, and you can find those screensavers. But anyway, so I've got Windows 7 finally running on this system. So it was very easy to install Windows 7, but the part that is very, very hard is getting all the drivers working. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how I did that here. Um, and so the main problem with Ryzen on Windows 7 is that the USB ports don't work. So let's take a little look at the MOBO right here. This is a B450 motherboard. Um, and I've got a GTX 1070 Ti right there. Uh, and the USB ports back there as you can see. The thing about installing Windows 7 on one of these systems is that you will not have any USB support uh, during the installation period, even if you're bored, like this one, for example, you can see that USB down there, that USB right there. That's a USB 2.0 port, okay? So I thought it might work, but it doesn't. So USB 2 doesn't work, USB 3 doesn't work, USB 3.1 doesn't work. None of them work. Um, but... What you want to find is, if, if you really want to use Windows 7, which I really recommend, like, not supporting Bill Gates at this point, because it's pretty ridiculous. Um, what you want to do is get a motherboard that has at least one PS2 port on it. This one has one PS2. You can find some that have two PS2s as well. Um, but the one is good enough if you know how to use a keyboard very well to control windows without a mouse you can plug a keyboard in that's what I did right here uh, or you can use the on-screen keyboard if you plug a mouse in there okay so you're gonna need something like that in order to control it so once but the installation procedure is fairly easy except for the USB so we're gonna take a look right here at how to get the USB working the easiest way I found to get it working so there's going to be a link in the description uh, with the drivers that I used. Um, there are some driver modifications. I really recommend using those because um, they just they work right out of the box. There's there's tutorials that tell you how to modify um, the drivers, uh, but I decided I'm just going to use the pre-made ones. I tried modifying them myself first, and blue screen to death. So, but these drivers work very well. So I put them on a disc because, of course, USB was not working at that point. So I put them on a disc. So let's just load it in here so I can demonstrate. I'm trying to push it with that. So we'll load them right in there. Now I'm not going to actually do it, but I'll show you what I did because I already did it, but... All right, so let's see. Okay, so right here. 
and I got the land driver and the Ryzen drivers. So this folder called Ryzen is, I renamed the folder, but this is what I downloaded from the forum that I'm going to link to in the description. So you can see right here, USB controller. So right there, uh, there's all the USB drivers that could potentially be on one of these Ryzen systems. Okay. So what you do is just go into device manager. Um, on my special, this is a special version of Windows 7 that I made myself using Enlight. Uh, so it's got links in here to all the relevant things. Uh, but on a normal Windows 7, you're probably going to have to go down here and type devmgmt.msc. So, but we'll just open it right here. Okay, so... Sorry about the shaking. It's hard for me to hold this steady with one hand. Yeah, down here. So this is, now it's working, right? But when it's not working, it's probably going to show up in here under other devices. So you'll see under other devices, uh, USB hub or something like that. I'll say USB something. It won't say exactly that until you install it. So it'll be up there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go update driver, browse, um, and then you're going to go right here. I have display driver in there right now, which is not what we want. Go to this Ryzen and select USB controller right there. You actually don't have to select. I, I thought maybe you had to select exactly the right one, but it turns out you can just select the USB controller folder and it'll find the right one for you. So that should install just fine, okay? And then it'll end up opening a thing like this, and it'll say the driver's signature cannot be verified, I think is exactly what it says in there. And it'll still, it'll show this, but it'll have a little yellow error symbol right next to it. So it will have installed the driver, but the driver will not be operable it'll say that the driver's signature is invalid. It's not focusing. It'll say that the driver's signature is invalid. Okay, so what you need to do then is download the other tool that I'm going to put in the description. That's this one right here. Okay, we're going to run this tool and it's going to give us this. Okay, this is the driver's signature enforcement overrider. Okay. Now there are other ways to do this, but this was the easiest way I could find. You can do this manually, but it's kind of hard and tedious. Um, so this works perfectly. You say next. You say yes. Now this thing doesn't actually install anything. It just it makes you go through that each time you start it. I'm not sure what why it does that, but anyway. So this is how it looks. And what you're gonna do after you install those USB drivers, you're gonna say enable test mode okay and then you're gonna say next and then it'll say test mode enabled uh, reboot your system okay and so then you're gonna reboot the system then after you've rebooted you'll still notice that the USB thing doesn't work um, the thing will still have a yellow symbol next to it okay so then after you've rebooted you're gonna go to sign a system file Okay, that's what you're going to do. Then you're going to click next. And it'll say, please insert file name including full path. So this is the path to the driver. Okay, so you're going to go and you're going to open up device manager again. All right. Okay, so and then you're going to go down to the USB. And you're going to double click it, and you're going to go to driver, and you're going to go to driver details, and then you'll see it right here. See, that's it right there. So then you're going to type that in. You're going to type that in there. Okay. So, and then what you're going to do is you're going to do that for each of these things. So all of these USB things, you're going to do that for all of them. Okay. So you'll type all of those in there. And you'll do it one after another. It'll, it works just fine. You don't have to reboot each time. But then after, after you've written all of those drivers in there,
then you reboot and then you should see that they look like this they're they're finally working properly so and then you can install all your other devices um, like this um, some of them will just work like I think this one just worked on its own I didn't have to sign it like I just installed it with update driver and it just worked um, most of the other things just work fine but if there's something else that gives a, a little yellow thing on it after you install it then just open up that program again and type the file name in there to sign it and then it will work the one thing to keep in mind is that uh, let me open this back up again is that yeah it'll make you go through this each time I'm not sure why but um, it says disable test mode there were some people online that were saying that when you're done signing all these things and you've rebooted probably several times at that point that you can disable test mode you cannot disable test mode it, as soon as you disable test mode the drivers get uninstalled again okay so you've got to leave test mode enabled even after you sign everything and everything is uh, apparently complete you have to leave test mode enabled so but and that's that's fine it, everything works just fine on windows with with test mode like that however what you'll notice is that down in this corner which it's not it's not there right now because i deleted it but you'll notice down in the corner here will be a watermark saying you know windows test mode build number 7601 whatever and it's just kind of annoying like otherwise the system will work perfectly fine but if you want to get rid of that then just get this tool that I will put in the description it's called remove all watermark on desktop uh, or remove watermark x64 um, it's by deepxw so his site is deepxw.blogspot.com he's the same guy that makes the uh, themes patcher and a bunch of different patchers see I'm running a, a custom theme here um, you can see it looks a little bit more sleek than uh, the normal Windows 7 theme does uh, so he's got a bunch of different patches on his website and so you just go and you hit Y and that will patch your files and then you reboot and then you will notice that this thing is gone even though the test mode is still enabled alright so the one last thing that I want to mention is after I got USB completed and everything was great um, I went on to install video drivers now that proved to be kind of a challenge as well but um, if you just use an older driver it will work fine so what I found out is that um, uh, yeah, I, this is a driver, an NVIDIA driver from 2019. So I tried several of their newer NVIDIA drivers, um, and none of them would work. It was actually hilarious what showed up in Device Manager. It showed catastrophic failure in Device Manager. I've never seen anything like that from Windows. Like, it seems almost like a joke, but... <laughs> That's what it said when I tried to install the newest uh, display driver. So go if you're having trouble installing uh, an NVIDIA card after you've gotten the USB and everything else is working, then you've got to go and download a version from 2019. I believe the version I downloaded was December 2019. It was, it was the last version from 2019. And uh, what, you, what you should probably do, just because it's nice to do is ha you, you should have 7-zip installed on your system because 7-zip is just absolutely necessary for pretty much everything so right click you would right click on the exe of the driver the nvidia driver and go ar open archive okay and inside of the archive you'll find a folder called display.driver extract that one that way you don't end up with all of the bloated bullshit from NVIDIA and just garbage um, and also I don't think the EXE version of the installer works you have to use device manager so you e extract display.driver you get this folder okay 
and then all you have to do is go to device manager and go to your display adapter and update driver software browse uh, pick from a list so unlike the USB you can't just hit browse and hit next you've got to pick from a list okay and then you're gonna go have disk browse and you're gonna go see I already have it selected but you're gonna go to display dot driver okay sorry about the shaking again I can't help it um, and then you select your thing it'll say it's not digitally signed I don't know why because it is digitally signed but I have a feeling that this uh, test mode <laughs> it seems to make things that don't have signatures work and things that do normally have signatures say that they don't have signatures so it's kinda weird um, but it works so you'll do that and it won't say catastrophic failure unlike the newest ones and then it will work properly so that is about it after you do that, you should have a working version of Windows 7 installed on a Ryzen 3rd generation. Alright, so thanks for watching guys, and I hope you learned something. And I really hope that you do not use Windows 10. Like, you know, it's basically spyware, and you don't want to be supporting Bill Gates with what he's up to. So, I really recommend sticking either stick with Windows 7 or use Linux Mint. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.